Okay, so now we have divisions uh, along our grid. All right, so this each one of these particular primitives here represents uh, wood plank that we're going to extrude out and we're going to detail and stuff like that. Okay, uh, but what I want to do now is I want to actually send this through another another loop uh, because on each one of these uh, particular rows, I actually want to offset the wood planks. I don't want you know these guys to be completely lined up with each other. All right, so let's take a look at how to do that. This is going to uh, introduce a new concept with our for each loop here, and that is the create meta import node. All right, so this node actually contains quite a bit of useful information when it comes to using these for loops, and you'll find that you're going to start using them a ton. Okay, especially when you get into procedural like randomization of things, because we need some sort of value that moves through time. Okay, so before I go too much farther with that whole concept, let's talk about this a little bit more. All right, so we have this metadata node now, okay? And if we were to come down to the geometry spreadsheet, all right, so if you don't have that open, you can always hit the little plus button right here and say new pane tab type. And you can then select the geometry spreadsheet and it'll pop up in whatever pane that you did that in, okay? Uh, but if we go into that geometry spreadsheet, we hit this little button right here. This is the detail view. All right, this is an attribute that we can actually attach to each um, particular object, a full object. All right, but this, in this case, I have the metadata node selected, and you can see it has some useful information on it. All right, so it has this iteration attribute, and it has this num iteration attribute. Okay, so and if I were to go and set this to single pass, and then select that metadata node, you can see the iteration is set to zero. So uh, one thing I want to do is I want to watch this move uh, here when I move the slider down here. But you notice that when I select a new node, all right, uh, it changes the view, the scope, and what, and what attribute I can see because these attributes are basically tied to wherever they are in the stream of nodes. Okay, so I want to be able to just look, view this data. So I'm going to hit this little pin button right here. Okay, and then select that block end node there. And you can see now our iteration is changing. This is some value that's moving through time. All right. Plus, we also get this num iteration. So we can see how many iterations we have total inside of all this entire loop. OK, so very useful information. What I'm going to do next is come in here and name this. So I'm going to call this the main loop. All right. And very important to name these guys because you're going to end up when your networks start to get bigger, you're going to end up with a lot of these metadata nodes. So you want to be able to reference them and know what kind of or know which loop it is for. So I'm going to call this the main loop. OK, so our next task in here, let me turn off this single pass here. Our next task is to offset these guys. So I want to randomly offset each row. All right. And that'll offset all these planks from each other, but it'll make sure that it's still tiles left and right. OK, so to do that, what I'm going to do is drop down a transform node. So I hit tab. All right. Started typing in transform. And now I have this transform node. So I'm going to wire it into our network that we're building up here. And what I want to do is come up to the translate. So now if I were to add value in this X direction, you can see that all of my rows are moving together. And that's not what I want. What I want to do is I want to use this main loop. I want to use the information in here, this iteration value. OK, so I want to pull that information in. So how do we do that? Well, we have to use another expression function called the detail function. So because this is a detail attribute, so what I want, what I want to do is start typing out detail, parentheses. And this time I have to use a string, OK? And that's because I don't have this data coming into this input. So I need to reference this node. So I'm going to type two quotation marks and type in dot dot forward slash and then type in main loop. And that gets us up and out of this node. And now we can reference any node that's in this space, that relative space there. So main loop. OK. And I'm going to put a comma in there. And then you can see in the IntelliSense help here, we want another string. OK. So you can see down in the examples, it's looking for a node. And then it's looking for an attribute name. And then the component mask for that. OK. So the, the attribute name is this down here, this iteration. OK. So let's put in two quotation marks because it's expecting a string and we're going to type in iteration and then we're going to put another comma and then we just want the first component because it is only a size of one over here. All right. Meaning it's just a single value. It's not a vector or uh, an array of values kind of thing. All right. So once we do that, you'll notice that we are 
moving over one each time. All right, and we get this nice stair-stepped look. But that's not really what I'm going after. I actually want to randomize this. All right, while this will work uh, just fine, it's a little, still a little too uniform for my liking. And so what I want to do is I want to randomize this. Okay, so this, what we can do is we can put it inside of a, a rand function. All right, so I'm taking this whole detail expression function and putting it inside of a random function. Well, there we go. So now we're getting a little bit of offset. But now what I want is the ability to control how intense that offset is. All right. So this is fine. This random function is great because it returns a value between 0 and 1 for us, or negative 1 and 1. All right. Uh, and what I want to do is I actually want to um, give it a new range. I want to take that new range, all right, and I want to expand it into user-defined values. Okay, so I'm going to type in fit, another expression function. And you can see that we're taking in a bunch of floats. All right, so we have the current number, which is this, this random detail result. All right, and we have our old minimum, our old maximum, and our new minimum, and our new maximum. All right, so I'm going to type all this in here for you guys so you can see. So I'm going to say uh, comma zero to one. So that's our old min and max. All right, so this random function returns zero to one. Okay, and then I want to remap it to a value of, let's say, negative four to four and then put in our final parenthesis there. And you can see that it pushes it in and out much farther. All right, what's great about this, once we get later into the course here, we'll expose these values up to our HDA. Currently, it's not an HDA, but we'll expose those values up here so we can just change it at the, the root level, All right, making it really fast and really efficient. All right, so there we go. We just learned how to use the main loop, how to access the information from it, and how to randomize our offsets. So now we get something a little bit more natural when it comes to these wood planks. All right, so let's move on to the next lecture and just keep detailing these out.